we're quite excited to unveil the, the Master in Development Management. This is a 30 year old program, but uh, it's, a, it's a program that's pioneering and is always innovating. <clears throat> and what I'm about to show you is another face in MDM's development and redesign. At the end of the, uh, this presentation, which will last for about 10 minutes, I'd like to end with three takeaways, right? Um, and already I can tell you what those three takeaways are. One is uh, what the value proposition of MDM is, right? Um, what is the core idea behind why we have this program? Uh, number two is what, uh, what the concentrations are about and how they could serve your career uh, goals and trajectory. And then third is the blended, uh, blended form of delivery of this uh, program, okay? So at the end, I hope to uh, explain fully why that is the case. Um, I have with me about 15 slides, so let me start with the first one, which pre presents for you and uh, the framing for you why the redesign or updating of um, MDM. So uh, before COVID-19 and before the pandemic and the lockdown, we, we were already in a path that was unsustainable and non-inclusive. Uh, pretty much across Asia, you had <clears throat> impressive growth, including the Philippines. But alongside that impressive growth is a missing middle or a missing middle class. So the widening inequality is something that not only do you see in the Philippines or in Indonesia, but really across uh, Asian countries. Number two is the environmental and sustainability of our practices, right? And that path is uh, something that we could, we could no longer um, continue. And what COVID-19 has simply done is to accelerate how obvious how obviously unsustainable the development path is. And uh, for that reason, we need new and innovative types of leaders. Now you might ask, in, in which industries, right? In which sectors uh, do we think um, these innovations can be most strategic if we want to achieve the greatest impact. And so you see here to the right of your screen, uh, one is we need to see innovations in policy implementation. How many times have we seen and heard that the design of our country's policies are impressive, but the problem lies in the impl implementation phase? So strategic innovations in policy implementation, that's one. Another is the business models that we have. We need to develop new business models that combine or integrate doing well and doing good. <clears throat> it's no longer enough for business to simply uh, do business. Or in another way of saying it is simply business looking for profit. Uh, now we expect businesses as certainly the, this new millennial demographic group and the, and, the, and the demographic group younger to this millennial group, they're looking for businesses to support, to buy from that combine the two, right? More and more social enterprises, in other words, have become mainstream. Uh, doing well and doing good is hybridized in these models. And then thirdly, if we want to see new business models emerging, obviously we've got to have new innovative ways, uh, innovative ways of funding them, of financing them, right? 
And so we also need innovations in the financial sector. So these are three key target innovation spaces that we think will be the 21st century careers. So I'll elaborate on that point in the subsequent slides. Um, this second slide is, is key because the question is, if we need innovations, then who will orchestrate them? Who will take the lead in creating these new business models, innovative ways of implementing policy, of um, creating new financial products? Well, the answer is impact leaders, right? Who have these competencies as we, as we highlighted. Uh, interpersonal and apti interpersonal aptitude and skills. That's one because you will need to work with different teams and teams that often change in the 21st century. And I'm sure you've seen this in your own respective organizations. Team members keep on changing, so your ability to work with different people will be key, not only within your organization but across organizations because the problems that we have can no longer be solved by one organization. They have to be collaborative and co-creative solutions that different organizations share, right? So a leader must have the interpersonal aptitude and skills. Second is the creativity. Creativity here doesn't simply mean ability to paint or to sculpt. A bit, creativity here means more than anything is the ability to look at problems in a new way, to dissect and look at the different parts of a problem and see how they're all interconnected, these parts, right? And you need that cognitive skill of creativity to think out of the box. Thirdly is the cognitive flexibility. Here, I simply, I don't, I don't want to go through those three points, uh, but a key factor within cognitive flexibility is the ability to put together new concepts, concepts that we've never had before or we don't normally think, uh, think with or think through, right? Uh, why do we need these new concepts such as, for instance, social entrepreneurship or impact leadership or impact investing? If you came into these room, if you came to this room hearing these new words, that's fine because that's what we mean by cognitive flexibility. You're able to put together ideas and concepts that most people don't, that may, mainstream people don't put together uh, and expect them to work, right? So the impact leader will have all of this. And I go to my next slide to tell you, therefore, what the new MDM program is about, what we promise and what we want to deliver. What we want to deliver is this promise, that the MDM will develop leaders who can deliver on impact at scale. Those are key words, impact at scale. It's not just the social and environmental impact, right? Um, but the ability to scale it, the ability to increase the depth and the magnitude of, of, um, of your intended impact, whatever that is, within the sustainable development goals that, um, that I'm sure you uh, discussed earlier, right? So impact at scale. Uh, we go to the next slide to tell you that the leaders that we want to develop in MDM, we want them to be in strategic areas, hence the concentrations, hence the strategic sectors we want you to be in. Number one is policy and transformation. Students will learn to employ innovative strategies for be better policy implementation and public service delivery. That's number one, right? And these people could be working with governments, 
could be working with multilateral agencies or INGOs. These collectively, we can call them social purpose uh, organizations. The second concentration uh, is the social entrepreneurship concentration. Right? What, what is social entrepreneurship? Social entrepreneurship, the most, uh, the, 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 the fastest way to explain it is that it combines two traditional modes of doing things. One tradition is the charity model, which is you use grants to um, you use grants to deliver on a public service, whatever that is, right? Uh, and you don't res uh, expect any returns on investments. And on the other, the traditional business, which taken to the extreme, can simply mean I deliver a service or a good for profit. So social entrepreneurship combines the two. The social business model means uh, I can deliver a public service while expecting financial sustainability. So social entrepreneurship is a hybrid of these two traditions that in the past have taken to be separate or siloed ways of doing things. And then the third is impact first investing. And this is simply a continuum that you see uh, in front of you. Um, let me connect this to social entrepreneurship in this way. If we want to develop these new business models, then somebody, an organization, not just somebody, but organizations, financial organizations, uh, family trusts, high net worth individuals, philanthropic groups, uh, will have to look at how they could fund them to take on the risk of these new business models so that they can uh, bring their ideas to scale. Right? And so to the right of this screen, you see their traditional philanthropy, venture philanthropy, and impact investing. So these three are practices where, which we call rather, impact first investing, which means that an investor thinks of social and environmental impact as a priority ahead of profit. Um, I couldn't emphasize all the more that 2020 is a watershed for this century. It is a watershed for many reasons, but let me just highlight two. One is the acceleration of the new systems and the new models that we have to create. That's the first acceleration. Uh, the second is the acceleration of the cre creation of new, of new professions. Right? And precisely this is where we want MBEM graduates to be in these 21st century professions. Of course, there are many other professions that will continue to be relevant and very important. But then again, as I was highlighting earlier, we'd like to focus on those three because for us, they are key. Uh, we, we think that we don't have, uh, we don't want to think that we have all of the time in the world. We don't have enough time. 20, 2030 is our deadline for the achievement of the SDGs. And so MDM sees itself as a key educational player in this impact project that we all have now. And it sees itself as the, the organization, the academic institution, the academic program to develop the next 21st impact leaders. So uh, the next slides will explain, um, we could um, skip this part, right? Um, but let me focus on the mode of delivery. Um, as I promised earlier, I'd like to talk about this. 
So it will be a blended mode of delivery. What does blended mean? Um, it will be online synchronous 50%. And the best way to understand online synchronous is how we're doing this now. You know, it's we're, we're at the same time uh, interacting. Uh, it's as if this is the closest proximity to a classroom, for instance. So this is online synchronous sessions. And then you have the online asynchronous sessions where the professor curates a learning experience of you, uh, for you that you can do independently. You don't have to do it um, all at the same time as a class. So that's self-paced and you do it on your own. And then there is a 5% that's face-to-face, -face, right? Um, the blended, uh, the blended uh, mode of delivery is also friendly to the to those who have and would like to continue being involved in their professional work, right? We will obviously demand from you that time to be with us and go through this learning journey from January to December, because in 12 months you finish this program. Uh, but, but we also allow uh, and our approximation is 20 hours a week you can render for your own professional or consultancy work, right? The rest of the time, we would like you to reserve that and be committed in your MDM learning journey. Um, the next slide. So it will, looks, it will look... Uh, Similar, you know, this is a, a snapshot of how your week might look, right? Now, this is subject to change, but what I simply want to emphasize here is that the synchronous sessions that you will have uh, will be timed in the evening. Now, the time that we're showing here follows GMT plus eight. Another way of putting it is Singapore, Philippine time zone. Uh, that's the latest, that's the latest time. So for those of you who are in Pakistan, those of you who are in India, those of you who are in different time zones in Asia, uh, that's about late afternoon, late afternoon. Uh, so uh, the time that you are not with us synchronously, you will have to devote uh, time and carve out a time where you could do your self-paced work, which again, we call asynchronous, right? So this is simply a snapshot of how the week is going to look and you will have enough uh, time to render uh, work, uh, professional or consultancy work in the morning, for instance. And we can take on a deeper dive uh, on that one uh, in a bit, but clearly this is your snapshot of how a week looks with us. So next slide, and then, yeah, can we just skip this slide, please? Yep, so the learning journey. And this, with this, I close. Uh, can we move ahead after this slide, please? Um, yeah, can we skip this slide, please? Yeah, and that slide as well. Um, oh, okay, so that was the next, that was the last slide, is it? Um, so the learning journey that you have with us, let me just emphasize is 12 months, you finish in 12 months, you do it asynchronous and synchronous with sufficient time to render some level of consultancy work or professional work, particularly most feasible in the morning. 
So I will end with my, again, with my three takeaways, right? Uh, as I started uh, this presentation. Uh, one is that we, we need a new breed of leaders. We don't have a lot of time. The COVID-19 and the pandemic and the economic devastation that has followed this pandemic has accelerated simply what we've always known, that the status quo before 2020 wasn't sustainable, number one. Number two is that we need a new, uh, we, we need to work strategically in certain innovation spaces. What do we think are those innovation spaces? Number one, on policy implementation. Number two, social entrepreneurship. And then number three, impact first investing. And then lastly, we would like to deliver this course for you in a blended way where you can have online synchronous and asynchronous sessions. With that, I, I hope I, I went over time. I'm, I'm, I, my apologies to the organizers, but uh, I hope that gave you things to think about and questions to raise uh, when you have that opportunity.